ever wondered how methamphetamine and MDMA affect your brain? Well, let's dive into the fascinating world of neurotransmitters and see what's going on under the hood. Firstly, methamphetamine, often referred to as meth and MDMA, colloquially known as ecstasy or molly, are both psychostimulant drugs. They are known to have profound effects on the brain by significantly altering the release of neurotransmitters, the chemicals that enable communication between brain cells. Now imagine neurotransmitters as the brain's mail service, carrying messages from one neuron to another. Two key players in this process are dopamine or DA and serotonin or 5-HT. When meth or MDMA enter the scene, it's like they've suddenly cranked up the speed of this mail delivery service. Methamphetamine treatment can cause acute increases in both dopamine and serotonin release. This spike in neurotransmitters results from the direct and indirect action of the drug on the dopamine transporter and serotonin transporter. Basically, meth becomes a substitute for these neurotransmitters and is transported into the neuron where it disrupts the normal balance. But the effects of these substances don't stop there. Meth can also affect the concentrations of these neurotransmitters and their release by altering the function of the vesicular monoamine transporter, a protein responsible for transporting neurotransmitters into vesicles for storage and later release. Following this, a reversal in the directionality of the dopamine and serotonin transporters causes a significant surge in neurotransmitter efflux. This is a fancy way of saying that more neurotransmitters are sent out into the synaptic gap, the space between neurons. Meth also prompts an increase in another neurotransmitter called glutamate, but this effect isn't observed with MDMA. Unlike meth, MDMA doesn't significantly increase glutamate in the striatum, a part of the brain associated with reward and movement. However, it does appear to boost the concentration of glutamate in the hippocampus, a region crucial for learning and memory. Both meth and MDMA increase serotonin release, but MDMA has a stronger affinity for the serotonin transporter over the dopamine transporter, leading to more pronounced effects on serotonin efflux. So these drugs significantly influence how our brain communicates internally. But what does that mean for us? Stay tuned to find out. Let's delve into the mysterious world of methamphetamine, also known as meth. This intriguing compound has a profound impact on our brains, specifically affecting the release of two key neurotransmitters, dopamine or DA and serotonin or 5-HT. Methamphetamine achieves this effect through a two-pronged approach. Firstly, the drug acts directly and indirectly on the dopamine transporter or DAT and the serotonin transporter or CERT. Essentially, meth becomes a passenger on these transporters, hitching a ride straight into the axon terminal of the neuron. Once inside, methamphetamine doesn't just sit idle. It disrupts the vesicle proton gradient, leading to an increase in cytoplasmic DA and 5-HT from vesicular compartments. It's akin to causing a shift in the balance, and suddenly, there's a flood of these neurotransmitters in areas where they shouldn't be. But that's not all. Methamphetamine also affects the vesicular monoamine transporter, or VMAT2. This alteration impacts the concentrations of monoamines, a group of chemicals that includes dopamine in the cytoplasm and influences how dopamine is released. As a result of these biochemical gymnastics, there's a reversal in the directionality of the dopamine and serotonin transporters. This reversal leads to a significant action potential independent neurotransmitter efflux, essentially causing these chemicals to flow out into areas of the brain where they ordinarily wouldn't be. This surge in neurotransmitters isn't a temporary affair. Short-term decreases in neurotransmitter reuptake also contribute to increases in extracellular dopamine. Secondary to these increases, methamphetamine also causes acute increases in another neurotransmitter, glutamate, in the striatum. So, meth creates a surge in certain neurotransmitters, disrupting the brain's delicate balance. But what about MDMA? Now, let's unravel the complexities of MDMA, commonly known as ecstasy. While similar to methamphetamine in many respects, MDMA or 3,4-methylenedioxymethamphetamine carves a distinct path in the brain's intricate network. MDMA has a notable preference for the serotonin transporter, or CERT, over the dopamine transporter, DATT. This preferential affinity results in more pronounced effects on serotonin efflux, a fancy term for the release of serotonin from the neuron into the synapse. 
While both methamphetamine and MDMA stimulate serotonin release, MDMA's affinity for CERT makes its impact on serotonin more prominent. Increased serotonin efflux can lead to feelings of happiness, empathy, and heightened sensory perception, effects that have made MDMA popular in certain social settings. But remember, these feelings are the result of a significant alteration in the brain's chemical balance. Unlike methamphetamine, MDMA does not generate considerable acute increases in striatal glutamate, an important neurotransmitter involved in learning and memory. However, it does appear to raise the concentration of glutamate in the hippocampus, an area of the brain vital for forming new memories. This increase in hippocampal glutamate may be mediated in part through non-neuronal mechanisms. The hippocampus is a particularly vulnerable region in the brain, and alterations in its chemical environment can have serious implications for cognitive functions. It's crucial to remember that while MDMA might not produce the same acute effects as methamphetamine, it still significantly alters the brain's neurotransmitter landscape. Even subtle shifts in this delicate balance can have profound effects on the brain's function and structure, effects that may not be immediately apparent but can cause lasting damage. So, while the acute effects of MDMA might seem less dramatic than those of methamphetamine, they should not be dismissed as harmless. Every drug interaction with the brain's complex chemical system carries potential risks and consequences. While MDMA may seem less harmful than meth on the surface, it still significantly alters the brain's chemical landscape. But what does all this mean for the long-term health of our brains? Well, the picture is a complex one. The neurotoxic effects of methamphetamine and MDMA are not to be taken lightly. They are far from benign substances. Methamphetamine, for instance, can lead to long-lasting damage to the brain's dopamine neurons. Over time, this can result in cognitive deficits and mood disorders. Similarly, MDMA, while often associated with feelings of empathy and euphoria, can cause lasting changes in serotonin pathways. These alterations can lead to long-term issues with memory, learning and emotional regulation. And yet, we must acknowledge that our understanding of these effects is still evolving. There's a vast amount of research yet to be done to fully comprehend these impacts and to find potential ways to mitigate them. The brain is an incredibly complex organ and these substances can disrupt its delicate balance in ways we're just beginning to understand.